on this video I'm going to be comparing the two best prosumer 360 cameras of 2024. Hi, I'm Gabby from Rage Studios and if you're new to the channel I would like to invite you to subscribe. In this channel I do a lot of tech reviews just like this one. In this video I'm going to be comparing the KuCan 3 Ultra with the Insta360 X4. Both these cameras have been in the market for a few months already so I think it is the right time with the latest firmware upgrade to do a head-to-head -head video comparison. I'm going to be comparing video quality, picture quality, features, design and battery life. So if there is some section that maybe you do not want to watch, you can skip it and check the content down below to go to the desired section that you prefer to watch. So let's take a look at these two cameras. First, let's start with the Kukan 3 Ultra. And as you can see, it comes in this very nice but simple neoprene bag. Now let's open the Insta360 and we'll see that it's also a neoprene style bag but it's in a completely different shape. But the thing that I can really appreciate about this bag is that we have a place to put a cleaning clothes and we also have a pocket for the lens cards. So you can always carry that with you at all times and it's actually very convenient. Now, back to the Kukan 3 Ultra. This is a much larger camera. Let's actually look at both of them together. And even so the X4 it is a little bit taller, you can see it there. And now we can see that the Kukan 3 Ultra is a little bit thicker and it's much wider. When it comes to the screen, they're very different shape and size. So the Kukan 3 Ultra is more of a landscape screen while the Insta360 is more of a portrait screen. This is all up to preference, but the Insta360 X4 does have a larger screen, which I quite appreciate and it's a little bit more easy to handle. But there is nothing wrong with this screen. Now, when it comes to the buttons, we have the recording button here, change the lenses between front and back, and this is the quick settings. Here on the side we have power button mode. In here we have a port for charging. Let's take a look at that. And on this side is how we access the battery. So we have the battery and the TF card there on the side. The advantage on this one is that you do not need to remove the battery to get to the TF card. Now we take a quick look at the X4. Uh, we have a very large screen like we already mentioned and then we have the recording button here. We have this uh, multifunction key. Then we have the power button with settings that can be mapped to something that you prefer. And then here on the other side, well, it's very clean. I like the materials they use. And here is where we are gonna access the type C port. Now, there is an advantage and a disadvantage to this and Having the Type-C port a little bit higher up means that when you charge in the camera, you want to keep this all the time in the back. You can see how the charging port is kind of there. And I'll show you quickly in this one. I open here. And the charging port is more like in the bottom. So I can close this back and still charge it. In this case, because the zipper have two directions, have basically two sides, I can also do that but I prefer this, I prefer to have the Type-C port here at the bottom. Now, the other scene is in here. Let's close that. This is how you remove the battery and now you can access the TF card. So basically you need to turn off the camera every time you access the TF card. One thing that I do like about the Insta360, this is you can see that, they have this orange color in there and I believe here is also orange, indicating that if you didn't close well the port, that could happen. Well, this is like telling you that it's not waterproof. So you need to make sure that there is no orange before you go in the water. With the Kukan 3 Ultra, that doesn't happen. It's always black. So you can see now it's open, it's black. 
closet remains black. Okay, now the Kukan 3 Ultra. It is considerably heavier than the X4, but let's see exactly how much heavier. So 339.4 grams and the Insta360 X4, it is 204 grams. So it's a lot lighter. When it comes to build quality, they're both really premium. But if I have to favor one of these cameras, just for the build quality, I will probably stick with the Kukan 3 Ultra. I like the materials, um, maybe because it's a little bit heavier, it feels very solid. But the X4 is also very premium and very well put together. One thing I'd like to remark is the lenses are a little bit smaller on the X4 and the lens protector have this system in which they lock in there and also the microphone here on the side have a little accessory that allow to reduce the wind noise. When it comes to accessories, a quick search on Amazon will give you a lot of results for the X4, but not so many results for the QCAN 3 Ultra. So if you like to pimp up your camera, the X4 is going to be a better choice. But for me personally, I do not like to buy too many accessories if I do not need them. So here are some of the accessories that are actually seeing are 100% a mask have. Obviously, the selfie stick, the Kantao and the Insta360 are very similar. The Kantao is a little bit longer, but there are like so many selfie sticks that you can have. The Insta360 is also lighter and smaller, but a little bit shorter, but there are so many sticks. Like you just buy whatever it suits your needs. When it comes to the lens filters, they're both easy to in and out. In the Insta, in the Kukan 3 Ultra, it goes in by pressure and you can always just take it out. The filter seems to be quite big. On the Insta360 4, they just go with a twist and they're much smaller. I kind of like the system a little bit better. Even so, I think the filters on the Kukan 3 Ultra seems a little bit better quality. The other massive accessory for me are these windshield filters that they actually really reduce the wind noise and they're just so practical and affordable. I really like this. The other accessory that I've seen is a must-have is these microphone adapters that they're kind of like designed to work with the uh, Rode Wireless Go. I have the Rode Wireless Go 2. I did an entire video about audio with the X4, so you can click uh, in the description down below to go watch it. Something that I do not love about the Insta360 X4 and most of their X cameras is that they, you always need to buy these adapters so you can plug in a microphone when there's already a Type-C in the camera. So why not let it work directly with a Type-C microphone? And now that is the case for the Kukan 3 Ultra that it has this only this metal adapter and you can directly plug in a Type-C directly into the camera. You do not need to buy an adapter. By the way, this adapter is not compatible with previous cameras. So if you already have the adapter for the X3 or the X2, well, it's not gonna work with the X4. That's quite annoying to have to buy an adapter every time you renew your camera. With the Kukan 3 Ultra, well, that's not a problem. You just plug in any Type-C cable and it works directly with your Rode Wireless Go. But something interesting, because you can plug it directly into the Type-C, you can plug in any Type-C microphone directly. So you don't even need this accessory at all, but most microphones that are Type-C, they might show on the stitch line. This adapter with the Rode Wireless Go 2, it doesn't. So yeah, there are some microphones that are Type-C that do not show on the stitch line. Something that Kukan uh, has sent to me is this battery charger. It's very practical. You just put the battery in there and you can charge the batteries real quick. When it comes to battery life, I tested both these cameras in a controlled environment. The temperature was somewhere around 24 degrees. Both cameras on a top table tripod and the Kukan 3 Ultra have a stop recording and self turn off right after one hour and one minute. While the Insta360 X4 have continued to record for somewhere around an hour and 30 minutes. 
then it stopped recording and it took three minutes to save the video and then turn itself off. Both cameras shooting all the time on 8K at 24 frames per second. I have set both cameras at 8K, 24 frames per second, 8-bit color. The time is 5 in the afternoon and this is the best lighting condition we can have. There isn't any harsh lights anywhere, there isn't any harsh shadows either. It is a well-lit uh, environment. So we can see what's the best possible case scenario here in fully auto mode. There isn't much wind here, it is actually a perfect case scenario, except for the fact that there is a lot of people here. There's a lot of people taking pictures because it's such a beautiful place here. There's a beautiful swimming pool beside me. And since I'm testing the lighting condition and also the audio, I'm gonna go ahead and test the stitching. First, starting with the X4 at somewhere around maybe two meters. I'm gonna get closer to around one meter. And I'm very slowly getting closer into that stitching line okay now I'm gonna do the same with the cool country ultra and somewhere around two meters now right in front of the camera I'm gonna walk besides the camera okay this is as far as I can go which is approximately two meters if I walk any back I'm gonna fall into a pit with water so that's maybe a little bit less than two meters but 1.8 meters I'm gonna get closer to around a meter I'm very slowly getting my face close into that stitch line. I am now testing the HDR on the X4 against the dynamic range boost optimizer on the Cook and Tree Ultra. Do you notice any difference? There is probably uh, the highlights on the sky are gonna be a lot brighter than the shadows on my face. I don't know if you can actually tell the difference between that and the previous video, but something interesting is that the Cook and Tree Ultra is still shooting in 8K with DR optimization while the Insta360 X4 HDR is only at 5.7K. In low light, the Insta360 X4 suggested that I should probably change to 5.7K plus. But even when I did, the Cool Country Ultra is still have much better quality footage with much more detail and better color rendition. The Insta360 X4 is not that bad, but in comparison, it's definitely not the best. When it comes to a stabilization, I feel like the Insta360 X4 does have an edge on the Kukan 3 Ultra, but they're both actually very, very good. The Kukan 3 Ultra, it is a little bit heavier, that kind of help with the up and down movement, but the Insta360 X4 has a better algorithm that is smooth everything very nicely. Before I go ahead, I wanna talk some numbers. There are some specifications that I was reading for the purpose of this video that really got my attention. First, the Cook and Tree Ultra have a significantly larger sensor. So it's one over 1.7 versus half inch on the Insta360 X4. And that means that the Cook and Tree Ultra have a much bigger sensor. The lenses on the Cook and Tree Ultra are f1.6 versus f1.9 on the x4 so they're much brighter they gather a lot more light that in combination with the big sensor well it's good another thing that is different is the the lenses on the x4 they're much wider 6.7 millimeters to full frame equivalent and on the cook country ultra they're 9.3 to full frame equivalent. So they're much wider on the X4, which means they're much more easy to hide that stitch line, but they're also gonna have um, more distortion. Well, the Kukan 3 Ultra at 9.3 is gonna suffer a little less that, that distortion. And the other thing that I noticed here is that we have inbuilt internal storage, 128 gigabytes. So compared to the X4, that you just have to put a TF card, so it's added price. Um, and the other thing is like we have inbuilt GPS module inside the camera on the Cook and Tree Ultra while on the 
Insta360 X4, well, it's, it's a super separate purchase. You need to buy a GPS module that connects via Bluetooth. It's complicated. So I would much rather have it directly on the camera. So those are probably some of the things that add weight to the Cook Country Ultra. It's a little bit more heavy that like we already discussed. But one more thing that is also very important is the, um, the bit rate. So we have 200 megabytes per second on the X4 versus 150 megabytes per second on the Cook Country Ultra. And I, I think it's, it's okay. Both cameras are okay, considering that they're AK cameras. Um, one more little detail here is the pictures on the Cook Country Ultra goes up to 96 megapixels versus 72 megapixels on the X4. So that's a lot of megapixels. To be honest, I don't know much about photography when it comes to 360 cameras, but I don't know, the data is there. But the one uh, aspect that is really very important is that the Cook Country Ultra can do 10-bit color versus 8-bit colors on the X4. So, so far, all the videos that you have seen um, on this comparison have been all been shot on 8K at maximum resolution. Some of the footage was 5.7K on the X4 because HDR you can only do 5.7 and when you shoot on now you can do 5.7 plus, which means 5.7. So um, I wanted to test that out. I wanted to test how it looks 10-bit color on the Cook Country Ultra versus the 8K flat color profile on the X4 and the results are really very interesting. I chose a place with very challenging lighting conditions. There is a lot of harsh highlights coming from the, the window. This is early in the morning. And there are also some harsh shadows as well. So the exposure is very challenging here. I did manually expose and I double checked that I was exposing correctly. And I exported both these videos using the studio app. I didn't touch my iPhone or iPad for this. I went into my PC and I make sure that I use their official LUT for color correcting the flat color profile on the X4 and the HLG, which is also a flat version of their video for the Cook Country Ultra. After exporting in ProRes HQ422, I take the time to color grade this in DaVinci Resolve Studio using a four serial knot. I know this is maybe a lot of information, but for the people who kind of like understand what I'm talking about, it's probably going to be valuable information. So I use a cinematic teal and orange LUT with a 50% gain. And after that, I color corrected and then color graded and touch a little bit the shadows and the colors. Just make sure it looks the best I could possibly get. And the Cook Country Ultra looks amazing. It really looks like something that is, doesn't even look like a 360 camera. Well, the X4, well, it does look like a 360 camera. The colors kind of fall apart. And when I was color grading and color correcting, the footage did not help up at all. So there is a big difference between 10-bit and 8-bit, and you can actually see it on the video itself. Okay, guys, with that, I'm gonna end my conclusion. Um, not without mentioning that the, the different software that these two companies have, so they both have a, an app on their phone and the studio apps, the studio apps are very similar. I like the simplicity of the Cook and Studio app. Uh, even so, the Insta360 maybe have a few more features, it's a little bit more complete. Uh, when it comes to the, the app on their phones, I have iPhone, so the Kukan app is actually quite good, it gets the job done, but the Insta360 app, well, is miles ahead of everything else, it's just really, really good. And one feature that I really like is that allow you to edit the video without having to download the video first. So with the Cook Country Ultra, you have to first download the video into your phone and then you can edit it. So it's like an extra step that takes time. Um, besides that, um, they're both get the job done, they're both easy to edit, but the Insta360 app is just way better. Okay, so if you're considering buying one of these two cameras, after this video, I think it's probably going to be very clear which camera you should buy. And I believe it's uh, depending on what you're planning to use it. If you are more of like a action video guy, like adventure, you like to go in the water, um, you like to move fast, 
maybe the X4 is good enough for you, especially if you plan to share your content on places like Instagram or TikTok. So people might not even see that much difference on quality there because it's already highly compressed. As a matter of fact, I don't know how much of this video was affected by the compression of YouTube, but you can see that uh, the X4 for social media is gonna be more than good enough. And like I said, it's lighter, it's more pocket friendly, and it have a lot more accessories and you know fits better in your pocket. Um, it's gonna be good enough for people on the go. While the Cool Country Ultra, it is definitely more advanced and with much better um, video quality. But to get that video quality, you know, it's not just push record and that's it. You might need to, um, you know, go into 10-bit color, edit it, go into the studio app. So I guess professionals and people who wanna match their 360 videos to bigger cameras like a DSLR or a mirrorless APS-C camera or even to your iPhone. Now iPhones tend to shoot really good quality. And if you're gonna match the footage of your X4 to the footage of your iPhone that now shoots ProRes, um, it's not gonna match very well. It's gonna be hard to get the 360 video of the X4 to match well to your iPhone. But on the other hand, if you use the Cook Country Ultra, well, that's, that process is gonna be a lot easier. So people who like to edit their videos, people who understand and know how to color grade and color correct, and people who want to spend a little bit more time, uh, well, the Cook Country Ultra is definitely the superior camera. I have bigger sensor faster lenses, way better codecs. Um, generally speaking, it's just better video. Okay, guys, this is my comparison. It took me almost two weeks to uh, properly test these two cameras head to head, and there was a lot of uh, testing involved, and I'm not a sponsor whatsoever. None of these companies have gave me any money, so I would really appreciate if you are gonna buy any of these cameras. They are affiliate in the description down below for both of them, so I can make a little bit of money. I get a little bit of kickback out of your purchase, and if you decided not to buy any of these cameras, at least you can help me up by subscribing to my channel and give this video a like. Okay, that's it for me today. See you in the next one. Adios, amigos.